Here we go. So we've got the peach from Jameson the Giant Peach. The tartoid is from the book uh, As Your Trot. We've got some Willy Wonka chocolate bars. The dream jars from the Big Friendly Giant. There's a dead mouse in a jar from Boy. We've got the potion from the witches, the Formula 3, what's it called? The Formula 86. Paintings, which were replicas of the paintings that Mrs. Fox did in the film. I had to make the, the foxtail, which isn't actually connected to Mr. Fox, because if you remember in the film, he got it cut off. Roald Dahl's suitcase that he used purely as a footrest, which was quite fun. And we put in the dream trumpet from the BFG as well. Here we are in the model making department at the National Film and Television School, where my students are working on a display model which celebrates the 50th anniversary of Roald Dahl's fantastic Mr. Fox. So we did a visit to the Roald Dahl Museum in Great Missenden, uh, where we had access to the archive. And then we started thinking about Roald Dahl's writing shed, which is where he created almost all of his stories. And we thought it would be quite nice to build the interior of that shed. The initial idea was inspired by Roald Dahl's hut, but also the Wes Anderson film. And in the film, there's lots of kind of shots of, kind of two tiers. So we thought it'd be a fun thing to play with in a kind of 3D format. So we've got the hut, we've got a burrow underneath. One of the model makers, Claire, came up with the idea that we could do Roald Dahl's writing hut being burgled by Mr. Fox himself. That way we get loads of kind of meta textual references to Roald Dahl's wider work, whilst also keeping it very in the spirit of Mr. Fox. I have 10 model making students, and at the end of the five week period, we have to have a finished display. You come up with an initial idea and you do a sketch, and then from that, we made a maquette from foam board. So anything that's a preliminary dimensional replica of what we're actually going to make is always called a maquette. So we do it with puppets, we do it with sets, and it's just a way for us to figure out what works size-wise, what works angle-wise, and just if it's interacting with characters or objects, how they all kind of fit together without actually having to make them first. And then we create a massive prop list with key items that need to be in the set. We talk amongst ourselves, work out who would like to do certain items, we put small teams together who can work on construction. And then we started on the base and the walls of the actual model. So we made those from MDF. I also counted the bricks and, and worked out brick sizes for the base. We decorated the plinth to look like the, the bricks that make up his writing shed. Uh, the, the bricks on the plinth were, were laser cut out, so we had, had a team of us sat there hand weathering them. The biggest part I did was I actually carved out the cave where Mr Fox's base. I, I also painted it and texturised it, so that was took up a lot of my time, but I really enjoyed it. I, I liked the kind of more free-form model making where it was more organic and I could play around with textures and colours. But that was obviously then passed on to other people where they was kind of dressed with roots and the little items were added to it. So it was nice kind of collaboratively to see it all come together. I mainly worked on the floor. I started with research. I, I looked at the original floor and then I made the pattern and then I hand painted the colourful shapes. I did the floorboards as well. They were cut to pieces and then I nail gunned them to the floor and painted and distressed them. And from there you start with the biggest pieces of furniture like the chair and the table and filing cabinets. After that you start making the smaller things so you really start from the biggest and work inwards. The fox himself is entirely based on the Wes Anderson version because McKinnon and Saunders are one of our course partners and they were the original creators of the box. So it was quite nice to be able to build something that respects that design. I start with uh, Maria on changing the proportion of the armature. An armature is the metal skeleton that you use to animate puppets. We cover it with some foam for the shape of the body. After that we start to work separately. She start to sculpt the head. You mold this head and I did some molds of the feet like this one and the hands as well. So yeah, after you cast the hands and the feet, you need to cut all of the silicone extra and send it on a natural hands without any lines. 
Yes, after that I paint a lot of thin layers, blend it together. And then after I painted the eyes, it was a scary process. I start to put the four uh, inside the silicone, hair by hair. <laughs> It was quite a long process. <laughs> After that, I did the costume. We find this very, very small corduroy and it was really, really useful because the color was the same, the proportion in particular was fantastic for Mr. Fox. I think some things had to be made from scratch on the last day and some things were nearly finished. And No matter how much you plan, the last day is always a bit hectic. Um, but we really clubbed together as a team and we helped each other out and it, it's a really good feeling when you step back at the end of the day and you've all done a hard day's work and you can say that's our model and it is a benefit when it looks good as well so I think we did a good job on this model and um, we should be proud of it. it it's great and you know when you come off a huge high and then you just sort of go Oof. but we had cake so it was all fine. Always have cake.